And I remember freezing with my kids and I went, and I got them all back to the house. I was scared. What if they see me? My name's uh, uh, Richie B, and um, I have a, a podcast that was banter with Richie B. That's where the Richie B comes from, because um, I guess it flows. But um, I own um, three acres of land in what's known as the Bridgewater Triangle in uh, southern Massachusetts, southeastern Massachusetts. Um, a lot of people are probably familiar with the Bridgewater Triangle. Um, there's been Class A sightings around my area. I've owned this property since 2002. Um, and my event started a decade ago or so. And maybe even before that, because there were things that you would hear out in the woods that you just think it's the woods, you know, because the woods can make noises and creatures and critters and turkeys and trees falling, whatever. Um, I didn't put a lot of that together till about a decade ago when I started kind of getting antagonized from the woods. So um, I would get kind of like I'd be working in the yard out back and um, I'd get like stuff kind of landing next to me. And it was the simplest thing because it's the woods and you would think an acorn would fall, right? So I had an acorn kind of hit my leg and I remember looking up going, oh, it's June. That's weird. An acorn fell. No, no big deal. They fall. So um, no wind or anything. And I was under a pine tree. So, you know, <laughs> so you know, just the littlest thing, right? Well, the next one came <laughs> and hit me up high and I was like in, in a direct line. And I'm like, wait, that's, that's, that don't make sense. You know what I mean? Um, so that got my attention and then it kind of accelerated from there. Um, I remember, uh, hearing footfall, like somebody was walking around out back. Now my area is a bottleneck. Basically what that means is I have three acres of land and abuts 94 acres of conservation. Um, and, and then one mile out in the, uh, uh, one, let me say one, yeah, one mile straight back into the woods uh, is what's known as the Taunton River. So um, it's a big waterway that goes through Massachusetts. So, you know, it's pretty extensive. You know, you don't realize it, but to get out there, my point is to get out there, you have to realize that you have intent to get out there and you have to mostly cross through people's properties. So I started hearing the footfall and like, like way off in the distance, you know, um, just like way out there, like trees breaking, snapping. And then I started getting curious. And then I kind of kept reverting back to the acorn that came at me straight, you know, um, in a straight line and um, kind of hit me up in the head area, actually. So um, so I kept hearing that. And then I, you know, kind of get, kept getting more and more curious. Um, I it, it started to get closer as time went on, weeks, months, whatever it was, maybe even years, you know, it started building up. And then all of a sudden, one day I was working in my yard and doing yard work. And I had had a few incidences at night um, out back. I was in my, uh, I had a camper out back. I used it for an office and kind of a gaming area because I like playing video games with my friends around the country. <laughs> a little, little tidbit. Um, so so I, um, I I remember being in there and I would hear like a, you know, no, sound out back. I'd watch the TV shows and I'd go out back and say, oh, I'm going to do a tree knock. And so... That's what I did. One day I did a tree knock and way off in the distance, I heard something knock back and I went, nah, you know what I mean? Like, nah, and I'm not a skeptic. I'm open-minded. You know what I mean? And I did it again, but nothing. And then time went on a week went by, I did it again. I got a tree knock back. So these things started happening. So I started getting more and more curious where I was tuning into like the production shows on TV and stuff. And then like I said, one day I was working out in my yard and I heard this one pole tree snap and it went reverberated right through my body. Like, it, uh, like as a man, I was nervous. Like what could possibly do that? Now in my area, we've just recently started hearing about bear and stuff like that. We didn't have a lot of bear down here and we still don't. I mean, if, if you see a bear in my area, it's on the news. Um, just to kind of give you a little insight how that works, you know. Um, I've never seen one on my property. I've seen deer, I've seen coyote, um, and fisher cats, things like that. But nothing, nothing that I thought could do what I what I heard. And I knew it was an oak or an elm. I knew it was it wasn't even a pine. I could tell by the binding the way it was torn in one pull. All you hear was it was like wasn't even like rocking back and forth like you would expect to kind of weaken it up a creek. It was just one loud, just like that. And I stood straight up like this. And at that point, I, 
I had found myself talking to the woods, as crazy as that sounds sometimes. I'd be like, you know, when you hear the walking around out there, I'd yell something out there, you know, and then the walking would stop. And I'd be like, okay, something just responded to me. So little things like that were happening. So I remember turning around and I said, come on, not today. I'm actually getting stuff done. And um, I grabbed my phone and I walked up to my fence. And about 50 yards from my fence is a game trail. And I had started like kind of investigating the game trail and stuff. And then I, I went out there one day to the game trail. I walked on for years and there was a pile of sticks and thorns and stuff broken trees on it and i had to walk around the game trail and i remember going what is that so anyways but that's like 50 yards from my fence and i scan my phone around and i have a video of it on my youtube and i kind of go to the left to right and i'm kind of looking and i go come on where you at and right after i say that i hear this like a growl come from the woods it was like a ah, like that and you know the phone actually muffles it so it's not like what i heard on the phone what i heard went through my body and at first I was like you know kind of standing up for myself in a sense you know I respect you you respect me you know I'm literally talking to the woods my neighbors must think I'm absolutely nuts right <laughs> I'm like but I don't care you know that I'm just I'm into this now 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 I know now something has verbalized to me now what I've been hearing has intelligence now I'm invested so about I don't know, about two minutes after that, it hits me what happened. And so I actually get nervous because I can't see it. I cannot see it. It's just beyond my game trail and I can't see it. And don't, it's thick out there. Yes. I can't see what it is. I can't hear it moving nothing. It was dead silence. And I started backing up, backing up, backing up, getting close to the street because I was in fear. And I remember I called my friend down in South Carolina and I said, I'm going to send you a video. I, I need to make sense of this. I need to make heads or tails. I don't understand what this is. Something just gave me like a humanly guttural creature, like intelligent reaction. And I backed up and I put my hands on my knees. I remember I had my hands on my knees. I kind of put my phone down and I went, I remember hands on my knees and I looked down at the grass and I go, what did I just hear? Like it, it, it literally, like I've heard people explain it like this. And I have a lot of friends now in this. And we all feel the same way. And that first reaction where you kind of get that element of intelligence and that element of um, perhaps human slash creature um, is mind blowing. It was life altering. Honestly, it really was. So since then, I had been on the alert. I tried different things. I put out a game, you know, the, all the all the novice stuff, um, game cameras and stuff like that, and like wide open places, like the thing isn't nocturnal and can't see my IR light or anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I went through all that stage, and um, and then the game. I funny because I put the camera up and the game camera uh, went off, and it went off a couple times, but there was nothing there. And then I come out, I take the card the next day, I come out, and my game camera is kind of messed up. Uh, my whole and then my game camera was messed up and the game trail was redirected again and and that's kind of what set me off and i've had a bunch of incidences ever since so i, I didn't know if you wanted the whole story or you wanted me just to begin it but no that's yeah. great it's good to to hear that so you came into this really you know like firsthand mm -hmm. just having these experiences at your own prop on your own property yeah crazy right and that's what it was i always i always explain in my podcast like I, I wasn't out looking for nothing. I, I didn't go, I didn't, you know, I had interest in cryptids and ghosts and I was a paranormal investigator for years and had a group of paranormal uh, um, team and everything else. So I, I've always been open-minded to this stuff, but no, I did not, I wasn't out in my woods looking for this. You know, I, I went out there one day with my kids and it, when I first thought it was kind of a, you know, not real. And I had my, I had three, three kids at the time and they were little, you know, from like 10 to four. And, um, we dressed, I dressed them up as superheroes and they had little, little, little weapons and stuff. And we went walking out there, you know, I'm not thinking anything of it, you know, I'm not thinking of a creature being walking around. And I get up to this point that I've always gotten up to before. And I remember slowly looking up and about seven feet up in this, this birch, there were two birches growing out of a moss mound and they would almost look like an upside down V. But about seven feet across, and I know a lot of people aren't big on structures, but it just didn't make sense to me. This tree branch it looked like another little tree to be honest with you fell down and landed perfectly parallel with the ground and i remember freezing with my kids and i went what is that why is that so level you know 
And then I wa- I kind of wandered around it and I noticed it had a Y and it wrapped around the actual tree that was coming up out of the ground. And I froze and I went, oh, that, I think you need thumbs to do that. <laughs> so I got nerd, but I have a picture of that as well on my on my um on my site too. And I tur- I said to my three kids, I said, all right, guys, let's go back to the game trail. And I got them all back to the house. I was scared. You know, I was scared. That didn't make sense. It was like it was like something saying, Yeah, don't go beyond this, you know. Um, and and in that sense, you know, and I know scientifically a lot of people aren't into that, but this was not there before. I don't know where it came from. It got my attention, it was wrapped around a tree, and I felt a need to get my kids to safety. So for whatever that's worth, that's where I was at. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so I've had plenty of incidences and um, I had an incident where I was sitting in my game. We were ready to do some gaming with my friends around the country. And I, and, and funny, because I was on WBZ iHot Radio with a um, reporter called Matt Shearer and the actress uh, Annika Noel. They actually had heard about all my happenings and... At that time, um, you might know him, Dave McCullough came out to do a report uh, from Squatchachusetts and BFRO reports. So he had come out, <clears throat> excuse me, to do a report, and he had brought them with him. And um, he asked me if they could come, obviously. And, you know, their guidelines, and my kids live there, so you have to be, you know, I'm not looking for anybody to rush in there with cameras or fame or anything like that. You know what I mean? My kids live there. So you have to follow my guidelines, you know, and I want my location given up. So, um, so anyways, he comes and, and they came with me and we did a, a whole thing on uh, WBZ radio. So we went over that together. And one of the things that I showed him um, was one night when I was sitting in the, it, it, in my camper, I literally say on his episode, he cut it and edited it and put it in his short that he ran. Um, it talks about me scratching a ticket. It's kind of funny because it makes me look like I'm scratching a ticket in the woods. <laughs> lottery ticket in the woods you know so there was a lot of funny comments about that but i was actually in my camper and i heard a tree knock way off in the distance and not i'm seasoned by this time it was way off in the distance it was it was dead silent in my camp i said oh, i wonder what, what's happening tonight you know and then i listened and then like five seconds later there's a tree knock not way off in the distance <laughs> it's like less than a football field away from me and so i grabbed my phone and i stuck it out the door and in the, in the video, again, on my YouTube page, you can hear walking through the woods, you hear a tree break or a branch break or whatever it is. And then you hear nine slams. It's not even tree knocks to me. Some, something is making a statement. Something's angry about something. I don't have no idea what. Again, it's, it's uh, almost nine o'clock at night. I cannot see it. Those woods are pitch black at like five o'clock anyways. And all of a sudden, it just starts beating on a tree. And I have pictures of the tree all torn up after. Um, there's like a two inch uh, deep, like C, like the letter C. If you stand behind the tree, you can see how deep it hit that bark and just buried that whatever it was hitting in into the tree. Um, I went out and took pictures of the tree the next day in the daylight. Of course, some people are like, why don't you go out there? And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm not going out there. <laughs> you go out there. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just wasn't doing it, you know? Um you know, there's fair there. There's real fight, you know, fight or flight. You know what I mean? And when you study more of these and you understand more of these these creatures that you, the, the flight is fine. <laughs> I'm okay with the flight. I don't need the fight. Um, so anyways, it, but it becomes research. So he came to me again, you know, and that's how that worked. And then um, I got pictures of the tree. I went back out to show a friend the tree. And where I stood to take the pictures was buried in sticks. Like he didn't want me taking pictures from there. It was absolutely bizarre. It's high, highly intelligent. Um, I've got crazy twists on my on my uh, trees, like three hundred and sixty twisted around, ambush huts along the game trail that weren't there before. It looks like something huddled in them and jumps out, and you know whatever they do. Um, just absolutely crazy stuff. Um, one night I was coming out of my camper and I heard a lodge break up, like again, like fifty yards from me in the woods. Um, I yelled something over to him and then something dotted across my property, which is probably about three football fields wide. And a lot of it's like peat moss, down trees, saplings, water, um, in like seven seconds. It was like crazy how fast this thing ran. It was like right through the woods. So I yell over to where it was running to. And at that time, 
something snapped again back to my left. And then I remembered the TV shows. And then I said, oh, I'm being, I'm being flanked. So again, I started backing up. And then um, um, somebody was outside at the time. And again, it was nighttime and they were outside. And um, they said, what was that? And I said, I said, I've been trying to tell you guys what's going on out back. You guys all think I'm nuts. I said, that wasn't a fish, a cat, or, or a reindeer. And she was like, uh, no, that was huge, whatever it was, <laughs> and fast. So I've had numerous things for years now on this property. It's been absolutely crazy. You know what I mean? Sounds like it. Um, have you ever seen one? Have you ever got a visual? No. You know, what's funny is I the closest I've come is these. In, and I always talk about, again, on my podcast, I talk about it. I'm a 95 percenter. I try to be as realistic as possible. Um, I don't want anybody, you know, again, I'm not not here for anything else but research. I want to know. I want to see. Um, so between all the circumstantial evidence I've had, it, to me, it equals to a 95 percenter. You know what I mean? Just to be fair and balanced um, and not look like, you know, grandiose or exaggerated. And um, one of the other times that was absolutely remarkable. And these are the things that you put together and gives you the percentage I get. So I was in the woods with um, a local author of the Bridgewater Triangle, someone that was doing a story on the on, on the property and um, not just me, but the whole triangle, you know what I mean? And Dave, and Dave McCullough, once again, um, had come out because we've become friends now and he was intrigued with my property too. So um, we went out there and did this whole investigation and we walked all through the woods and he was impressed just with the woods and the viability and the possibility and all that stuff. And um, at the whole time I was pointing one to, off to my right, I was pointing off in a direction to my right. And I'm saying, I'm hearing like, scuffling like at the very edge of my hearing and then i point to the left and i'm like this guy's gonna think i'm nuts you know he thinks i'm one of the bigfoot 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 guy and i'm not i'm i'm hearing things and they're not and anyways long story short this went on we were out in the woods for a good three hours so i kept hearing something at the very end and i i must have pointed a half dozen times and um I, we get back to the property well close to my property right at the edge of my game trail right before you go to the edge of the game trail and then it opens up into this big, well, not a clearing, but you can see a lot. And then it, so you have a wall of like density. And then behind that wall is an opening of like a tree grove. And then you go back into density after maybe, you know, hundred yards. Um, so we're in that clearing before at the edge of my game trail. And we're talking, I put all my electronics away and everything else. Everything's going in my backpack, my backpack's on. And, Dave standing there and he goes, what kind of duck is that? Cause we heard a noise. And I said, I've been here since 2002, brother. I, I had never seen a duck in the forest. You know what I mean? I said, let's just listen a minute. And the best way I can explain it was the Sierra sounds. And they were like less than a football field from us, maybe 75 to 80 yards from us. And I, and all of a sudden it broke into a vo a verbalization, a conversation, a language. And they went, and then as soon as he finished saying that one, there was a bigger one, again, in the directions that I was pointing the whole time, that like an upside down pyramid, basically, I was pointing left and right. And off to my left, a bigger one was like, like they were talking. And here's Dave, a seasoned, seasoned person, you know, co-founder of Squatch Massachusetts, BFRO member. BFRO reporter, um, he's sitting there with his mouth on the ground. And after the big one, the second one finished, the one back to the right said something again. It was the same type of language. But this time when he finished was one like tree knock sound. And I say tree knock sound because we don't believe that they have this perfect branch every time to walk around and hit a tree. You know what I mean? It, it, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like that one clean, like oak on oak, like that, which we believe could be like a um, a mouth pop or chest or chest pop, you know what I mean? One or the other. Uh, maybe in this particular case, I think it, they do both. Um, and then it went back to the big guy, and he finished with oh, 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 oh. he went off for like five to eight seconds, say. And then when he was done, he did the same sound like a tree dog. And Dave, the reporter, and myself are standing there in awe and dave goes i think it's time for us to go now at the time i'm thinking you know get your phone like reach for your phone 
and I started to go into my hoodie pocket. And then also I kind of thinking, I'm like, what if they see me and get aggressive? Or what if they see me and stop? Like I will, this is a personal experience with credited people, credible people. I kind of want to soak this in too. You know what I mean? Without ruining it, you know? So I didn't even get to, it. I just froze. I just, it was froze and it was over quickly. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't like it lasted a long time, you know? Um, and then we started walking out and I remember I turned around and I, I waved to the woods <laughs> and I was like, thank you. Thank you guys. We're going to leave now. Thank you. Like they basically walked us out and they were proud that they did. And they were communicating back and forth that it was done and over and let's head back to wherever we're going to go. And that, and that was it. And next we know I was on my lawn and, and we were out front and, um, a friend, Mike trainer had showed up with some prints and that he had casted about a mile and a half away from this location and uh, we just talked about what had happened and told him what had happened, like like high school kids. Like we were just like, dude, you can't believe what just happened. We heard him talking. Like while it was going on, I'm looking at Dave, I'm looking at Dave going, Is that Sierra Sounds? I go, dude, that sounds like Sierra Sounds. So those accumulated with all the incidences that I have. Um, I'm a bit of a, a bit of a structure guy. Um, so I combine all those things together. Um, the knocks I've heard out in the woods. Um, I've got a video of recently we we're out there in a winter time and there was loud, huge knocks across the river. It was like smash, smash, wood on wood. Um, you know, so I've had a lot of these things happen circumstantial in a sense, because I don't have the visual. And, um, to me, it equals 95%. That's where I'm at, you know, to be fair. You found any, have, you've obviously researched out there in the winter. Have you found anything in snow or any, any kind of tracks on your property? Yeah. Once again, I just posted something, you know, it, one of the things that we've been looking for. So I have a lot of compost on the ground. That's a great question. Cause a lot of people ask that, you know, where are the tracks, you know, how they can be on sometimes online, <laughs> settle down, you know, let's have a conversation. Let's all be respectful to one another. We'll get further if we are more respectful as researchers and just people. But anyways, I digress. So um, yeah. So we found this area where the, the trees were really bent weird you know, like it almost like you could kind of huddle under it. And then I found out like a 60, it was the day a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and I have found other things that were impressions. Um, and I've since got, uh, I use Scanaverse now. It's a um, app you can use in your phone. And Alex Petikoff actually told me about it. Um, he uses that. And I said, uh, it's a free app. You can download it. So I've got a lot of different interesting things, toe shapes, steps and stuff. You know, nothing like casting in a sense. And then in the snow, to answer your question, a couple of weeks ago when it snowed and then it was like really frozen here in Massachusetts. So um, every, the snow froze after. So me and my buddy were out there and I see this like it looks like, a you know, someone's been walking through the woods, but all the snow is broken in a row. So and there are logs and trees, so it ain't like exactly a straight line, like on the side of a mountain that you see, you know, that's been documented and stuff or on a beach or a river. So it is kind of broken up. But I come across these two. One was like a back hill, and the other one was I could see I could see toes with separation. And I put that up. I put that up on my YouTube as well um, for people to see and hopefully comment respectfully on. Um, I try to get some kind. Even when they, even when people are negative, I try to keep positive dialogue because it's not about me and how I feel about how you feel about me. It's about the research and and possibly finding an endangered creature. You know that could use to be more known in a sense to keep it safe. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm all about. Um, so, yeah, so I took my, I had a little mini bat that I used for a knocker and I put it next to it. I took some pictures and yeah, you could see it and it measured, um, it was like 16 and a quarter long and almost nine inches wide at the ball of the toe area to the right, you know, the little side of the foot. So um, yeah, so we believe that there's a, particular um family male female and juvenile out there and only because again we have to go by impressions and, and compost a lot we have found things that measure almost exactly the same without you know glorifying or fantasizing or trying to make it fit the narrative you know what i mean um just straight up legit through scan of scan them do the measuring tool on them it measures it for me and then there you go and we keep ending up with the same number so just try to try to be as scientific as possible. You, you got to be scientific and yet you got to be open minded, which is, you know, kind of a battle within, isn't it? <laughs> you know, it, it definitely is. Yeah. Um, 
So you interview other people who have experiences, I presume? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. It's so cool. what are some of the uh, interesting things you've found out from them? Oh, great question. Um, I Well, first of all, I find surprise in some of the people. Like people, like all my friends didn't know. I kept it secret for years. I mean, you know, pardon the phrase, but I came out of the Bigfoot closet and all my friends were like, wait, what? You're into this stuff? You know, but um, I had lost a, um, a son in 2022. Um, he was born an angel. And that gave me the passion to say, you know what? I'm just going to step out and live my life and do what I love. And this is something that I have loved for a long time and haven't told anybody about. So that's how I get into it. So, so the people are surprising, the ones that are talking to me. So um, I've had a few come forward with like, oh, I think this might be something. I think this might not be something. Um, and then I've spoken to like the Vogel brothers, uh, Mike Trainer, um, you know, Dave McCullough. Um, you know, Alex Petikoff is going to be on my show March 19th to sit down with me. And I'm very blessed to have him um, as somebody to lean back on. So, you know, all the stories specifically, it's more like an invest. People want me to come investigate. Um, some people, it's about structures. Um, and then other people I've heard about prints. And then one lady says she goes out. One lady I spoke to, I did a, I was a, a guest speaker for another presenter at a, a historical society in this local town. And she came after the, the, the show, she had come to me and, and I obviously took it as an interview and asked her if I could use it and all that stuff. So she has a farm and she goes out to this back shed where the, the, the sheep are, I believe sheep and, and, and some goat. Um, and when she gets out there, she hears this quiet, like five, six, seven, eight times, like, tapping on a tree and it like it with a stick she says because i was talking about tree knocks and showed the video of what i experienced and things like that and she's like that's what happens out back but it's quieter and it's like repetitious and i said so you saying something's hitting a tree with you think something's hitting a tree with a stick like eight nine times in a row trying to get your attention she says yeah and then sometimes you go out there and find all like the the um the oats kind of thrown around but not, she goes, I don't see like a whole bunch of them eating. I see them just kind of thrown around like, ha, I'm here. And I want you to know I'm here type of stuff. So that was that was one of the little profound things that I thought. Um, I said, well, do you think it's trying to communicate with you, get your attention? How do you, you know, I, what are you thinking, you know? Um, so she goes, I don't know, but I'm so afraid to go out there. I have to have my husband come out with me. So that, that was a pretty profound story. And now I have a skeptic. So on my show, I do big footing with a fan. So, <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, I do Bigfoot with a fan. I've taken um, a fan out with me, Bigfoot. And now I have two more in line. And now I have a thing called um, Sasquatching with a skeptic. <laughs> so it's kind of funny, right? A lot of fun. Um, exactly. Yeah. So I'm go ahead. I'm Has sorry. Has anyone else in your area? Has anyone else in that area heard those Sierra sounds by chance? You know, that that I've never heard. You know, I, there's Class A sightings, um, one by um, uh, Joe D'Andrade back in everybody's the famous one anyways in my area with the bridge associated with the Bridgewater Triangle. Um, and then there was a Class A sighting probably about three miles from the location, maybe four, um, of crossing the road by the dump, the old crossing the road by the dump sighting. You know what I mean? Um, but that one there is, is pretty famous. But I've never heard anybody... Uh, make the sounds you know what I mean like talk about the sounds they've heard somebody said one day they heard they heard like a whoop and the only reason why they knew it might be associated with something like this is because they've watched me do it you know what I mean like on my podcast so the podcast is like you know turning over stones you know and looking for things you know so it's really awesome and I have a very interactive crowd to where I invite so if I have a guest on say you're on my show um, we have a link that a, someone in the audience can click and be on screen with us and come in for like five minutes and ask my guest a question and then they leave and then the next one can do it as well. So it's an interactive podcast. So, but what I'm finding with this, it makes it more personable and people tend to trust more when it's more personable. So I figure, you know, and let that God down and feel part of and have fun with it and enjoy this topic. You know, you might never see one your whole life. You might, he might never be discovered our whole lives. 
You know what I mean? And, and maybe your children one day and their generation will discover it, you know? So um, it's quite the topic, you know, in general. So, um, but no, I've never heard anybody talk about the sounds of, you know, the recording sounds and things like that, or the Sierra sounds, excuse me. I've heard it in other places besides, you know, just the, the original Sierra sounds. I've heard, I've heard uh, that other people have indeed also experienced that. Um, yes. So I think it's it's not that um, terribly uncommon, but it's also not just an everyday occurrence either. So what do you think these things are? You know, there's a lot of speculation as to what, who, if, you know, Bigfoot exists. But, but what are your opinions of that? Um, for me, um, to to touch on your last statement you made, my area, I would not imagine Sierra Sounds in. So, yes, that's a great point that you bring up and a great question that you ask. Um, but I believe, to answer your question, I believe, uh, for me, um, I'm all about an earthbound creature. Um, I believe there's some kind of cross, you know, human, uh, what do they call them? Pure, whatever, bread, I don't know, I don't know how, whatever the big word is or phrase. But I, I think it's a cross between like a primate, um, uh, Neanderthal type thing. Um, you know, the old bridge, you know, everybody talks about when it was all one continent, you know, all that stuff. I don't believe it's a Gigantopithecus. Um, not that I haven't met one, but my understanding is this would be um, too uh, intelligent. You know what I mean? It, to me, it's, it, has, it has so much reaction and so much intellect from what the things that have transpired to me. I just gauge it more towards cavemen more towards missing link, more towards humanoid, you know, that's what I gauge it towards. Anything could have crossbred out there. We have no idea. We have no idea. They, they have bones of giants that people don't study and understand. And all this is part of the research. Like I have studied thousands of hours of documentaries and some now yours, actually, you have quite extensive and impressive collection that and work that you you've created has helped me as well. And Alex Petikoff was another one that was a mentor of mine. He don't know it. He'll know it on Tuesday. <laughs> I mean, on the 19th, you know, but um, just a great balanced dude. He don't believe in structures, but we don't go back and forth about it. That's his belief. You know, um, that's fine. He's more scientific and that he has to see his thing. Uh, I'm into oddities and things like that and trying to explain how it got like that. Um, but I've studied all these shows and all these documentaries, mainly documentaries, boots on the ground, Guys like Alex Petikoff, stories like what you put up, and that'll help you research this field and kind of get a better feel of what you, you know, give you a better insight. Well, that's, and, and that's the other thing. The 95% is because of all the research too that I've done, is all the the accounts that you've documented, all the all the things that Alex has been through. Les Stroud had some incidences. These are guys that are out in the woods constantly all the time. They ain't never seen one. He was like, oh, they never seen one. How come they never seen one, you know? No, but they have things, they're here for a reason. They're here explaining it to you for a reason. They're investigating it for a reason. You know, credible uh, wildlife type men. And I don't know if you know Eric and Tim Vogel out in Western Mass um, on the New York line. You know, Tim's a Tim's a, um, uh, a park ranger. And and he run, you know, 1,300 acre forest. Him and his brother own a wildlife guide um, company. These guys are out in the woods constantly and they've had multiple sightings and they have multiple casts of footprints in their area. Um, I've become very, you know, good friends with them as well. And uh, if you want to, if you seriously have passion, you will seek out answers. They might not be defined answers or answers with a period. You might have to put a comma at the end of that answer so you can build on to that sentence. Um, that's what I'm doing. So I, I'm at that point. So that's what gets me to my 95%. Um, and it's all about that research. So therefore, I come to the conclusion, I've never seen, listen, I'm not doubting what anybody else has ever saw. And I would never badmouth anybody who puts in the time or has had crazy experiences. I told people when I was eight years old, a lady walked up to my face and said, hi, you know, turned out she was my grandmother that died when my father was 13 because I described it to my mother. Nobody has to believe that. And I, I'm not mad at them if they don't. That's what happened to me. So this is the same type of thing. This is the same type of thing. If you're not having these experiences or you're having limited experiences from what I even had, it's a, it's a, it's a tough call. You know, it's a tough call. I believe in them. I believe they're more, like I said, Neanderthal, 
you know, mixed in with something else, whether land of the giants, however, but I believe they're human, human bound. Um, um, I don't think, you know, I, it's hard for me to buy, you know, do all the intimate dimensional stuff. Um, again, I've never seen Sasquatch build a structure, but I've never seen him cross through a portal either. You know what I mean? So I'm open-minded about structures. I'm still open-minded about portals. You know what I mean? But that's not my belief at this time, you know? Have you heard or has anyone talked to you about having this massive amount of sound coming from a certain area of the woods, maybe when they're camping at night or, or something like that. I think this happened to Ron Moorhead also. They had just, they thought their camp was being completely torn apart because there were such massive amounts of noise happening outside their, their tent. Um, and I've heard a lot of other people talk about this. They could hear it. It was ferocious. They could hear limbs breaking. They could hear th something stomping. It was just this massive amount of sound. And then when kind of the dust clears, so to speak, they go look in the area of which they heard the sound from, and there is no evidence whatsoever that anything has been there. And this happened to Ron Morgan as well. They come out of the tent the next day, and their camp is intact exactly like it was the night before. What do you think is going on there? Yeah, that's, you know, that's a great question. And I've heard of this, I'm going to call it, a, you know, phenomenon, I guess. I, I you know, to, re, to kind of go back to my paranormal days, um, you know, Anything like that is absolutely possible. We don't know if that's a defense mechanism. We have no idea. We don't know. You know, some people say that they can communicate without words, you know, um, and telekinesis, excuse, whatever. <laughs> you can fix that word for me. But, uh, but anyways, they can, you know, they can talk to you or communicate with you through thought. Um, is that a possibility? I, again, I wasn't here back when this creature became so I, I don't know what's possible in that sense you know i'm i'm a sensitive um i've done readings on home i've been in mediaship classes you know what i mean um is that a superpower in a sense sure you know um so i would never doubt any of that happening and if you live through it um then you know that part of this is real i have not had the fortunate which i would consider fortunate i mean nothing i can say maybe i heard a bunch of noises and, and then just didn't have the you know the campsite to you know, compare to, you know what I mean? I might, maybe there were crazy noises out in the woods because I've heard plenty of that, but you can't really go out in the woods and say, this place, oh, it's not a mess. Yeah, it's a mess. It's the forest. <laughs> so I don't have anything to compare it to, but the sounds I've heard, you know, uh, the crash and the break and the stomp and um, like they're trying to get your attention. And, you know, and I believe that, sure, that's a possibility. You know, that's absolutely a possibility. Anything's, anything's possible with a creature you've never laid eyes on or, you know, studied or um, like Jane Goodall, like sat there and watched them live. Um, anything is possible. We don't know. Um, the alien connection, it's all possible. Maybe, maybe, maybe they weren't an alien. Maybe they were earthbound and the aliens kind of claim them and use them. People talk about being uh, abducted all the time and probed, right? Maybe they put a chip in them. Maybe they make them so they can do that. Oh, sure. Why not? That's not nuts. How's that nuts? I got, I got friend uh, down here, Matt Moniz. He's in a he's been abducted many times, you know, and uh, has stories, detailed stories to share. And he's it's well documented and deemed as factual. So, you know, there's a theory. You know, <clears throat> we just made one up together, me and you. <laughs> have you ever have you ever seen an orb or a craft yourself? Um, I not associated. So orbs, um, in the paranormal world, craft, um. I think a craft would be considered more of a detailed type situation. I've experienced UFO phenomena. Yes. Um, my whole family has actually, we were just in Maine a couple of years ago after we, again, after we lost my son, Jack, um, my friend was gracious enough to give us a cottage away for a week on the, on a lake up in um, Maine. And we went up there to have some iron iron, do some fishing and just be our goofy selves and play corner and sit by the fire and play video games, whatever. And the first night we were up there, um, we we're all fishing on the dock at night because I love night fishing. So I got the kids like night bobbers and shiners and all that stuff was fun. And I look up and there's this pulsating orb, not an orb, sorry, sphere um, coming across the other side of the lake. And it's pulsating. 
And I'm like, oh, what kind of plant is that? I didn't see like the colors and the little flashing and all that. And it wasn't that far away. It was pretty strong light. And then it stopped. And it went, helicopter? But I don't hear the, th -th 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 -th, you know? And then it picked up fast. It was fast. Like, I remember when you're looking in the sky, it's like knots in the water. You know what I mean? People say, oh, your boat's fast, you know? How fast is it? And they're like, oh, 40 knots. Well, what is that? Uh, 60 miles an hour, whatever it is. I don't know if that never is correct. I'm just using it as an example. So anyways, when it, same thing up there, it's same effect. It just shot across the sky, then kind of slowed down and went back to pulsating. And when I say pulsating, it was like bright, dim, bright, dim, bright as it moved. And then it got to the tree line and just shot. And me and my wife and two, three of our kids were staring up like, uh, did we just see a UFO? And then um, the next night I was out there with my son. And it wasn't the same pattern, but it was off in the distance a little further. And it was kind of angling towards us. And it did the same thing. Uh, not exact, you know what I mean? But we could tell it was this pulsating orb with, you know, that could project itself and, and, and pick up speed. This time when it got to the tree line, something, sh something like kind of shot out the back of it, like a, like a, a shooting star. Uh, it was crazy. And my son, my 18-year-old son at the time, um, threw, threw down his fish run and said, no, I'm, I'm done. I'm going in. Horrified. I'm not getting abducted. I'm going inside. I guess they can't find you inside. <laughs> but no, it was quite the experience. So we've had that. Um, I've never had anything associated with Bigfoot, I don't, you know, as far as orbs and all that go. Um, you know, again, we're in the Bridgewater Triangle. There's things out there called ghost lights, stuff like that. So it's hard to associate unless I see, you know what? One thing that did happen that was very weird, actually, and that my my daughter and I had, uh, to, I guess, to go veer into like a little bit more uh, like a cloaking type thing what people talk about, which is really weird to me and tough to grasp as well. Um, I'm not there yet, even though I've had this experience. That same mound of tree I was showing my daughter because she was a little bit older there. And that stick is still there now, by the way. That mound that I told you guys about earlier, the peat moss mound with the V-shaped birches with that stick perfectly across is still there. And this is a few years back. I brought her out with me and we're standing there and we're looking out. And I think I did a couple of whoops and stuff. And by then, you know, the cat was out of the bag. Dad was in the Bigfoot. Dad believes a Bigfoot's living out back, blah, 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 <laughs> you know, <laughs> dealing with all that stuff, right? And just within my circle, though, it wasn't public. And I brought my daughter out there, and we're standing there on either side of the mound, and we're looking off. And um, I said to her, because, again, I was a paranormal investigator, so validation is key. And the way to validate is not to tell or explain, but to ask and see. So I said to her, what, what are you hearing right now? And she says, Dad, I hear something running at me, but I can't see it. She goes, and it's big and fast. And I said, okay, turn around and go to the game trail. Because that's exactly exactly how I would have described it. I heard something running at me, full speed, very big, big footfall on the ground, boom, 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 coming towards me. And I could not see a tree move, nothing. I, I could hear it as plain as day. There wasn't a sound from the leaves. It wasn't even like a sound from the leaves. It was more like they were running on hot wood. You know what I mean? So I don't think what you're saying is any of that stuff's out of the realm of possibility. And that's not something I typically share. You're probably the second. You know, I might have said it on my podcast once. Um, it's just so profound to me. It's hard for me to grasp that and then share that as an actual story. But my daughter and I, my daughter will tell you that. When Dave McCullough was there, I said, I told him the story. And I asked her in front of him. What did you hear? And he told her, or she told her, and he was just like, "Wow, it was mind blowing." So, all that I guess I guess all options are open, aren't they? I think so, but you know, I've heard that story before. Um, there was a researcher that was walking through a field, and other researchers were hanging back, and she had been a runner. Um, she was some some type of a, a an Olympic runner or some form working toward that. And so she knew what it sounded like to have someone running up behind you mm -hmm. or, or you know, pacing you. In, uh, oh, behind. yeah. And she was walking through this field and it was dark and she heard this enormous you know, sound of these foot, these footsteps 
coming toward her and she could almost feel a wind you almost off of it it was so mm. it was so loud and so ferocious um but she just kept walking assuming she was actually assuming it was one of the researchers behind her that were was back in a forest area just seeing what would happen if she walked across this field and she described it exactly the way you're saying exactly now this was an area also known for bigfoot activity but it was also mm-hmm. known for a lot of paranormal activity right that's that's that and the bridgewater triangle is that um and i don't tell, it, tell me more about the bridgewater triangle um what all has happened there what what makes this such a phenomenal area um well, you know, it's funny because I I just got, I've known about it my whole life. And as teenagers, we were going to go camp out in it. And there were stories of this huge black snake and, you know, really just crazy stories. And you just kind of laughed at it and you'd go up with your friends and, you know, maybe drink alcohol like you weren't supposed to because you were too young or whatever. And we we're going to go out there one night and camp and all that. I don't even think it ever happened. Um, but it was always a story in the background is my point. As I've gotten older... Um, I've learned more about it and I've, I've gotten well versed in it. I have friends that are really, really, I would consider experts on it. Um, there's talks of like, um, uh, there's talks of like, uh, like I mentioned, ghost lights. There's something called the Hawk Mock Swamp or a place called Hawk Mock Swamp. Um, that is the area. And this is what they believe a lot of this is associated with where during the King Philip's war, um, a lot of his, a tribe um, retreated to because they were in a, a, a war with the colonists because um, the colonists believed that they killed uh, as a Sassaman, one of their leaders or a very popular colonist. And they believed that King Philip or had had him killed. So this started this war and that went on, you know, technically for longer than they have it documented as because there were skirmishes from the southeastern part of Massachusetts through Rhode Island all the way up to Vermont. Um, but mainly Hockamock Swamp is where a lot of this was um, done and happened. And I, again, I don't know all the details like all the experts do, but uh, he, King Philip eventually was captured and killed. And they, you know, cut off his head and hung it somewhere, you know, like they used to do back in, when humans were uh, less evolved, I guess we'll say. (laughs) Um, So now they believe that there's a Native American curse. Um, So what happened over the years, this area, uh, Lorne Coleman came down at one point, and I think it was in the 70s, um, and coined it the Bridgewater Triangle. How that came about, I don't know. I know there was a Bigfoot sighting, like I had mentioned earlier, for Mr. DeAndrade, and I believe maybe Lorne Coleman was probably um, looking into that. But anyway, so this area had all kinds of different phenomena. So you had ghosts um, out in the woods. You have uh, puck wudgies. They talk about puck wudgies a lot, which is another cryptid uh, to believe to be at one time friends with the Native Americans, felt betrayed, and <clears throat> went into the woods. And basically, if they see you, they try to lure you into the woods and all that. And, um, so, yeah, puck wudgies are a big thing in this area. Um there's a couple other things I've heard, Weedama Woos and all that, and which is a little darker. But um, you go out into like the Freetown Forest area. Freetown Forest has a lot of ghost lights, orbs, um, cult activity because of the area and its history. Um, Bigfoot sightings, trackways have been found. Um, I've been out there a few times with my friends. And, and one day, I actually one night we were out there and there's a phenomenon that happens. And I've heard it twice now uh, with my own ears um walking through um this long path has little archways and it's like almost you can see it off to kind of just disappear and get smaller it's like a it's a path with like trees arching over it and it's just you just keep going and going and going and it was weird it was like five or six o'clock and maybe the fall time and it just was like pitch black and i said to my buddy i said hey, let's turn and go back this is a little deep and um i stop and i go you hear that and he's like what i hear i heard Indian drums with a soft chant behind it. And I've heard that twice in there. And that's one of the things that they talk about. And I was like, and I said to him, you can't hear the drums. And this is the other thing interesting about the drum theory is the drums. Not everybody in the, in the crowd hears, not everybody in the party. You won't just sit there with five people going, wow, everybody hear those drums. I've never heard that story. I've always heard somebody two, maybe out of five or, you know, one or two people go, oh, I, oh, I can hear that. 
And uh, yeah, so that's one of the bizarre things. Um, I was just out there a couple weeks ago. We were doing um, we were doing a uh, collab with um, Exploring with Phil. He's on YouTube as well. Um, and he does all kinds of crazy fun stuff. So he's into everything. Bridgewater uh, Triangle uh, expert, I would consider. But we were out there, you know, doing the REM pod, the EVP recorders. Um, and I was not, you know, communicating, doing my cryptid thing. So it was like a collab between the paranormal and the cryptid world. And uh, we have some really, really cool stuff. And um, the REM pod was answering questions, basically. REM, if everybody, I assume everybody knows what a REM pod is. Basically, has an antenna in the middle. And you have to be close to it for it to go off. And you'd ask questions and it would light up and shut off when you, you know, when you asked it to shut off. It was, it was pretty crazy. So lots of great, crazy activity there. Um, yeah. So it, it, the history of it goes on and on and on. Then there's like these old houses like placed um, in certain areas and they have certain stories about a Puritan uh, preacher at one time and, Somebody murdered somebody. You know, you get all these different kind of crazy, cool fables and stories. And, you know, Alex Petikoff did it at uh, Strange Places in um, his new his new show that he has. And he was out in what's called the LBL, the Land Between the Lakes. And it was very similar. And he actually brought it up. I was watching. I go, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think I actually texted him prior going, hey, this is like the Bridgewater Triangle. And then, like, five scenes later, he says it. I'm like, oh, now he doesn't think I watched it. <laughs> you know what i mean so no but it was like it's so cool and i recommend everybody there's a documentary that's been out there for years the beginning of it halfway through is really great the back end of it's kind of gets a little weird um but look into the bridgewater triangle it, it is ha there is something to be said and it's not exactly the triangle that was coined um for popularity in a sense you know what i mean for uh to, you know bridgewater bridgewater triangle bermuda triangle you know everything's a triangle because they're trying to build off of that but no the alaska triangle all that stuff it's actually a bigger landmass um than just that little area that they talk about the whole area is crazy especially uh, hawkmark swamps absolutely nuts that's all i can say about that <laughs> so, as, so as a paranormal researcher, what are some of the, the things you've researched and, and uh, some of the strangest things that, that you've discovered? Well, I, you know, I used to go out my, so it was kind of a unique um, dynamic back in the day, right? So I used to go out, I, I had that experience when I was young. Um, I got, I became 26 years old. So all that stuff went away. Um, I went out and partied, lived my life. 26 years old, came a spiritual awakening um you know don't drink alcohol nothing like that like my whole life changed and i said you know what i gotta get back to that i need answers for what that was in my bedroom when i was eight and i got back into that and i so i called my sister i'm like hey and this is of course taps is starting up and you know you're kind of getting back into watching those shows you're like oh i heard that you know that type of thing and so we would make little lanyards and i still have them and we'd go to the local cemetery and try to brush up on our techniques you know and um Again, I, I'm a, what I consider a sensitive. I could probably turn it up. I just don't want to. Um, but yeah, so we'd go out there, and I have, and I have my sister, my brother, my brother-in-law, my nieces. You know, like a family thing. Everybody that went out with us was basically family, and it could be five to ten people at a time. We'd break up in groups and stuff, and police would show up. What are you doing out here? We'd tell them. You know, they would love it, and they think it was a hard time. It was good, good, good-hearted fun, safe. You know. Well, somewhat safe, right? So I remember being out in this particular cemetery and, and we were doing an investigation. I had some activity by this particular gentleman's stone um, that I was kind of attracted to. And I walk away from it. And I get about, I don't know, a couple hundred yards away. And I turn back around for some reason. I said to my niece and her boyfriend at the time, I said, go back over to Mr. So-and-so's because we were calling him by name to be respectful. But he had this big overgrown bush where like nobody had been there in many years to take care of it. You know, <clears throat> I said, go back over by him um, and just do an EVP session. So my niece goes, okay, no problem. So there's a rule that you have in paranormal world, no running. There's just no running. <laughs> it's just for obvious reasons. Right. So all of a sudden I get stopped walking away and I hear screaming. And the guy and her boyfriend screaming just as well. It wasn't just her. She's screaming, he's screaming. And then they come running out from behind the bush. And I said, what is going on? So, and you hear it on the EVP recorder that the whole bush shook. 
they were like, why'd you send us over there? Was that a trick where, you know, like, like I went back over there and shook the bush. I'm like, I'm nowhere near you. You just saw how far you ran to get to me. So you, but you could hear on the EVP record of this bush shaking. <laughs> so for whatever reason, I was attracted to it again. And maybe Mr. So-and-so wanted to have a little fun. And he scared, you know, the daylights out of these two teenagers. And they came flying in the, through a cemetery in the, in the nighttime. It's not very smart. So I was like, no running, you know. Um, and then another particular time we were out, and there's actually two other times. One, one particular time we were out, I saw this young girl. She was walking down the middle. Uh, this is a di- I think it's a different cemetery, but she was walking down the road like you would drive on to go visit a relative or whatever. She just kept walking. And she was little, and, and I could tell she was, you know, I knew she was an apparition. And she was wearing a this little dress but it didn't it didn't even look time period it was you know um and she just kept walking and i was like this i kept saying there's a little girl right there you guys see it you can hear me on the recorders you see the little girl right there walking down the middle of us it was almost like through the middle of a crowd and she just kept going and my niece goes yes i see her and i went wait what <laughs> she's the only and I'm, that's when i found out my niece was a sensitive as well <laughs> I, that wasn't uh by design but it was pretty cool you know what i mean um so yeah, so that was that was kind of neat. And then uh, the last story I'll share with you: we were out again. A lot of them brushed. I so I've done a lot. I've done house readings, uh, things like that. Um, and then the the owner would go out and do a uh, go to the town hall or whatever, you know, and then come back and say you were spot on. I can't believe you knew this and knew that. And it was really cool to get validated like that. Um, it takes a lot out of you. And I have like like six kids now, so I I'm very scared of taking things home with me. Um, but this one time in the cemetery, we were, we, we did, did the, uh, live reviews. So basically you snap a picture, anything in the picture, you'd go over and do an EVP. So we found this bright self-illuminated orb, what we deemed as an orb, um, and did an EVP session because of the orb. And then in that it's also, you can hear it. It's class A. It's still up on my shelf up here in front of me without batteries because i think that keeps me safe <laughs> but uh it was a classic class a uh break into the frequency sound and then it goes get out and leaves the area and it was just like uh so we all went to leave and i of course i have to do a circle of protection in and out of these places i don't allow anybody to come out with me that doesn't do it saint michael prayer the whole nine yards and we're in this circle and my other niece is there with her now husband. It was her boyfriend then. At, we're doing a prayer circle. And he goes, yeah, real funny, Uncle Rich. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, pardon me, Linda. He goes, grab my butt. You know, I just, <laughs> and I am the clown. of the, Trust me, I'm the clown of the crew if you ever watch my podcast. But we have a lot of fun. And I said, I promise you I did not do that in a prayer circle, brother. I promise you that. So he's all the way out. He's shaking his head. And he keeps kind of reaching back at his, you know, his, Pardon me, his right buttock. And um, he gets out. We get back to the house, and he's in the back. He's gone. And Michelle goes and checks on him. And uh, she comes back says, Uncle Rich, I, I think there's something wrong. Like, what? She goes, Kyle has a scratch down his the lower back onto his butt cheek. They had, he had, and he had a scratch like this. So that was quite profound and definitely eye-opening. You know what I mean? And I found it. The other thing I find curious about it was as we were going into our prayer circle, it wasn't after the prayer. It was kind of like, I have to hurry up and get over there. That's the way I imagine it anyways. So yeah, those are some of the things that were pretty nuts. Well, it sounds like you have a wealth of information between, you know, Bigfoot, your paranormal research and just your own experiences. Yeah. Thank thank you. I I didn't know that. You know, I didn't know that. I just thought this, everybody laughs, like this is Richie's life. That's the stuff that happens to him. And I didn't know that until I got out here into the public, um, public stage and, you know, talking more with more people in YouTube and the YouTube world. And, and of course, these amazing, amazing uh, people that I've had in the Bigfoot world from Alex Petikoff to Dave McCullough to Mike Trainer to the Vogel brothers, uh, um, you know, uh, just amazing people that have really, I've been blessed with because they kind of guide me. Keep me in check in a lot of ways, too. You know, when you, you call them, oh, 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 you like this, and they're like, yeah, porcupine. <laughs> you know, <Exactly. laughs> you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's well, exciting. I thank, you. I, I thank you for being on this show today. I'm going to go ahead and end our interview for now, and I appreciate it. I'll let you know when this comes out. 
No, that'd be absolutely great. Let me know if you want to be on a fun podcast, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. I have a few stories of my own to tell, but they're not Bigfoot related mostly. I would love, I love your work and I would love you. I would love you to come by. I'll send you a message. Maybe we can actually work up that because I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very intrigued with your work. I was like, <laughs> wow, you work a lot. Oh, tell me about it. it almost killed me this year. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, no, I bet. There's a lot of, but thank you for all that you do and, and the research and getting people to talk like myself, genuine, you know, everyday people, researchers. That's huge for the field. And, and it's very appreciative because I've had conversations with, about you. Um, obviously after hearing from you, I was like, Hey, do you know, Hey, what's this? And then I started looking around I'm like, wow, like I couldn't believe it. So Brian Terrell is another one from red, uh, dirt cryptid. He's, uh, in Oklahoma. Um, he, uh, he, he's going to be on my show this, this Tuesday coming up. He's a really good guy. I'm glad I found him, but he's, I guess you interviewed him at one time, but yeah, yeah my point is that that's how you get it done. That's the boots on the ground. That's the documentary, the production and all that stuff is kind of, you know, could get kind of scary. I mean, when I say production, I know you guys all do production like Alex and stuff like that. I mean, like the TV stuff, you know what I mean? The big time difference without I have working like you are working like Alex is being boots on the ground type. That's what's going to get it done. You know, and I'm with this, oh, yeah. I just, I just yeah. appreciate, I appreciate it as a researcher, you know, that, that firsthand experience out there and the genuineness of those people that are out there, you know, in, in the field, and not even researchers sometimes, they just, the happenstance of, of the circumstance. I mean, there is, that's, there's richness in those experiences and you can't get that any place else, but just genuinely having them tell their story. Yeah. And, and to, to that point, when I have it on my podcast, um, I get messages after on my messenger. Hey, Rich, um, you know, a friend of mine that I've known 30 years, you know what I mean? Uh, so this happened, you know, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm glad it gets to draw them out in a sense. And, yes, and they does, feel comfortable yeah. and they know I'm not just going to blow. Hey, guess what? Guess what Tom said, everybody. You know what I mean? I told you I was right. Cause Tom said, so, you know, it's not like that. It's, it's, thank you so much for sharing with me. I appreciate that. You know, and um, it's important, you know, like you said, just those, even those one time incidences, because all of a sudden you compare a note with somebody that happened at one time you've experienced a dozen times and it almost validates your dozen that you still have a rational th process in your head <laughs> where you want to go. Oh, maybe it was a, maybe it was a bird. You know what I mean? And that person says that. And, that, and I'm like, you know, a couple incidents. I'm like, Oh, that, yeah, that's been happening to me for a while. You know what I mean? So exactly. it all yeah. helps. It, it all matters. Um, and I'm all about the research and, and, you know, the, the Jane way, let's put it that way. If we're going to find these and, and, and scientifically, then it's about observation. It's not about harm. You know what right. I mean? So it's yeah, not exactly. about, you know, needing to draw blood because you knocked them out with a tranquilizer or something, you know, you do it the same way and you keep your distance and be smart about it. I mean, she sat with great apes, you know what I mean? So, you know, nobody tore her apart, you know what I mean? So not saying that this isn't, you know, these aren't capable of that. I'm just saying maybe it's a process of doing it that way. Binoculars from half a mile away. I don't know. You know what I mean? 